Lisa, what's the latest information that we're getting from Russia's Sakhalin region? Well, tsunami uh, alarms sounded in Sakhalin region, which includes, of course, the Kuril Islands, which are very vulnerable in terms of these uh, tsunamis hitting Russia's shores. Already, three waves ha have hit the Kuril Islands, reaching up to three meters high. And although there has been no damage, no facilities uh, or buildings affected, no victims reported, authorities are taking this very seriously and are taking very serious precautions. A state of emergency has been declared, and some 11,000 people are being evacuated to safety, to higher grounds in Russia's Sakhalin region. Uh, now, a state of emergency has been declared, like I said, and the Russian president has already ordered uh, Russia's, the head of Russia's emergency services uh, to start thinking about what Russia can do to, in fact, also help Japan get through its devastation. Of course, we're ready to help our neighbors in overcoming the effects of this severe earthquake. A state of emergency has also been declared on our soil, on the Kuril Islands, in the Sakhalin region, where all necessary measures must also be taken to prevent damage and loss of life. The tsunami has already reached our shores, and we must all be consolidated at this time. I'm now ordering the emergency's minister to present a plan of assistance to Japan. Now, other precautions being taken, uh, maritime vessels that were docked in port are making their way out to open seas, uh, and tsunami cleanup forces are on standby throughout Russia's Far East region. Uh, this threat of further tsunami certainly does loom as those aftershocks continue to take place in Japan. Okay, Lisa, many thanks for that update. I will be crossing back to you later for more on uh, the effect that uh, the tsunami is having on the Sakhalin region.